Inside here is the Rocket AR Spatial, an update to the Rocket system which I've been waiting for quite some time. But before I open these, I want to give you guys some context first. One of the most useful gadgets I've used in the past few years has been the Rocket Max AR glasses with an asterisk, which I featured last year. Now, essentially, these glasses allow you to view a giant cinema-sized display, which isn't really there, and you can overlay it onto your surroundings or alternatively blank it out to view it in peace. Now, I loved them because I actually found them incomprehensibly useful during the first year of fatherhood, using them long into the night as a way of watching films, TV, and playing the PS5 through remote play without having to disturb my newborn milk goblin or wife with a brilliant bright screen lighting up the room. Instead, it was all in the glasses going directly into my eyes. Now, the reason I put an asterisk at the end of its name is because the, the Max wasn't really AR. Yes, you could overlay the image, but it had no real tangible connection to the outside world. It was completely stationary within the glasses themselves and offered no real augmented experience. Well, this is somewhat about to change with the new Rocket AR Spatial System, which sees the release of the Rocket Max 2 and the Rocket Station 2, bringing spatial elements to the Rocket experience, and finally making these worthy of the AR acronym. Now, for some clarification, the Rocket Max 2 and Station 2 combined are what Rocket calls their new AR spatial pack, and the original Rocket Max 1 and Station 1 combined are known as the Joy Pack. Now, you can, of course, buy all of the bits to each system separately, but we'll mostly be taking a look at the comparison of the two systems and the individual components that make up these systems in today's episode. But this new system, the AR Spatial Pack, was showcased at CES last year, which unfortunately I didn't attend, and supposedly it won eight Best of CES awards. So the big question is, does this new release live up to that incredible hype? Well, let's start by picking apart the changes. Now, on the surface, there are some design changes, but overall, the Max and Max 2, from a design aesthetic, are not too dissimilar. With the front shield on, which is the blackout plate designed so that you can just see the display and not the interface overlay, both glasses appear the same size and same weight and same shape-ish. And this is very much the case on the side profile too. They've both got USB-C still on the left-hand arm and both have a button control on the underside of the right arm. Now, removing the blackout shield is where the design starts to change. The original ones remind me a little bit of swimming goggles, whereas the new ones have a much more subtle aesthetic. They look a lot more like a pair of sunglasses, even down to the kind of Ray-Ban-like etching on the upper left of the lens. A very subtle detail, but one that adds up with the rest to make these a much less obtrusive piece of kit than the previous ones. Now, okay, close up, you aren't going to be fooling anyone, but a casual passerby would probably never know that these are doing a lot more than just shielding your eyes from the sun. Unless you're being weird, of course, and have some kind of audio coming through the glasses because they both have external speakers, which can get confusing with people if they can't actually see what you're watching. Hmm. Jokes aside, the new model, I think, has a slightly better sound than the originals, and I think that's down to the larger drivers that are built into the underside of the arms. Don't expect to recreate booming sound of the cinema, but actually, from a sound perspective, they do seem to create quite a good spatial sound for such a small device in this form anyway. Now, I was testing out the absolute misery-inducing film All Quiet on the Western Front, and the sounds of the battles were particularly immersive and definitely aided by the slightly larger drivers. Now, I find myself often using headphones when connected to my phone, generally because of what I mentioned earlier, trying not to wake the milk goblin in the dead of night 
but the speakers are certainly good enough if you didn't want to use headphones. But really, you probably should be shielding everyone you know and love to the sounds of All Quiet on the Western Front. Watching it will make you miserable for weeks. Hearing it probably the same. And actually, going back to the actual shielding of the device, you'll notice that the large styling has resulted in this section underneath the main lenses, which kind of in effect helps with immersion when watching films by darkening or certainly reducing the amount of stimulation and light being leaked from under the glasses. So overall for design, although it's very similar, they've definitely made some tweaks to the aesthetic. This had some quite positive effects on the user experience. Now, functionally, both have USB-C port on, which I mentioned already, and this can connect directly to your phones. When using an iPhone, it simply mirrors the screen to the device, and you can suddenly see the screen in its vertical alignment floating in front of you. Now, in this mode, neither the Max 2 or First Gen Max will give you any kind of AR or spatial type experience because it's singularly using the phone on its own, which is simply casting the display onto the internal display of the rocket glasses and powering them at the same time. Well, this, of course, isn't the best way to get the most out of the rocket glasses, but it is the most simplistic form of experience with them. And often, if you don't want any of the spatial fun you get with the rocket station, which I'll come on to shortly, then this in itself, connecting your phone directly to the glasses, is a great experience. This is mostly how I ran with the first gens anyway, late into the night, hooked up to my phone, watching sketchy crime documentaries on Netflix at 3am, expecting to see Ed Gein standing at the bottom of the bed when I remove the glasses. But from a screen and quality perspective, the experience is very similar between the two. Supposedly, the resolution on the Max 2s is slightly higher at 1200p rather than 1080p of the Max 1s, although this isn't a huge increase in resolution, so largely it's a very similar experience, and also the brightness is the same as well, as far as I can tell, and both display at 120Hz maximum refresh rate, which makes them good for things like gaming. But you can change the brightness in the settings, but also whether you're using the shield or not will change the user experience. With the shield, everything is clear, even in broad daylight, because you're essentially turning these into sort of VR glasses. When the shield is off, you're getting a physical pass-through, an overlay of the display on the natural environment. The environment is slightly darkened, as if you were wearing sunglasses, and this does go a long way, though, in helping you actually see the display as a pass-through, even in broad daylight. Although, as a pointer here, if you're in a particularly bright environment, it can be sometimes hard to see the darker scenes, and darker images if you're not using the included shield. Now, talking about the viewing experience, one thing I like from the original Rocky glasses, which has found its way to these, is the diopter adjustment on each lens, so you can change the focus on each eye individually to match your own eyesight, meaning for those that wear glasses or contacts, you won't actually need to wear glasses or contacts to use these. It's a great feature that makes this type of tech more accessible to a wider audience, and I'm all for it. Now, so far, I've just spoken about them being connected to the phone as a visual HUD for your phone, but there is another better way of experiencing these, and I've already held it in my hand once, and as I mentioned at the start, although the glasses can be bought separately, to get the most out of the Rocket system, Rocket released both the old and new glasses as part of a pack, and in these packs comes the Rocket Stations. You had the Station 1 with the original Joy Pack, and now with the new AR Spatial Pack, you've got the Station 2. This, in my eyes, is where the biggest change in experience has come from, and as a whole, Rocket have really updated the spatial experience. But before I delve into that experience, just a quick look at design of both the first station and the second station, you can clearly see some differences. Gone is the iPod-like design with the big circular wheel and button on top, and the chunky buttons on the bottom on the station. One instead, were left with a smooth, sleek surface, which reminds me somewhat in appearance of a 3GS. And if you hadn't guessed by now, the entire front is a great big touch panel. So although the actual glasses hardware and design has remained somewhat similar, 
As you can see, the station has been completely transformed. Plugging this into the glasses and turning it on pops up the Rocket menu system, which feels very familiar and that it very much follows the same sort of aesthetic as devices like the Meta Quest or even the Apple Vision as an example. As a side note, the Station 2 has a built-in 5000 mAh battery and 18 watt charging capabilities. What differs with the old one is that it can be charged at the same time as being used as the brains for the Rocket glasses as the whole Rocket spatial experience. The old one actually required you to either stop what you were doing to put it on charge or buy an adapter that let you do both at the same time. So it's good to see that Rocket have finally made that change and included it as standard. But moving back to the experience, you'll see a menu bar at the bottom which tracks your head and always stays at the bottom of your vision. You can interact with the buttons on this menu using the station as the pointer, which is quite an interesting way of interfacing with it. And from here, you can start opening apps. These apps you open up as a window and are fixed in place within your vision. So although the menu bar tracks the movement of your head, these will always be in that same position, even if you look away from them. But what it doesn't have is full room tracking. So you can't walk away from the windows in a virtual space and they stay where they are. But from a seated position, at least you've got that kind of spatial environment. Now, to test out this, there are a few spatial experiences in there which are fun, and there's even a couple of 3D experiences which show the depth that these are able to create with 3D style content. and actually shows the experience you can get if you're still able to source 3D movies, if they still exist. Now, I did have a look at a few SBS 3D movies, and the effect is very, very great from this small form factor. If anything, you're better watching 3D content on something like this than a TV which supports 3D, because from the experience that this provides, it does a much better job at making something look 3D. And besides, you're already wearing glasses with 3D content on a TV, so you might as well be wearing these. It's still windowed, so it's not going to be the full level of immersion of a VR headset, but for something this small, it offers a fantastic 3D experience. Incidentally, there are a few other viewing modes too, which are useful depending on what you're doing with the device. When in multi-window mode, you can head to the bottom and expand the screen in theater mode, and this lets you adjust the screen size for immersion when watching movies, ultimately giving the effect of a 300 inch screen. But going back to the apps, what's awesome is that this device works intrinsically like an Android device, so you've got scope for what is possible. If we stick to the core functionality though, there is a Rocket App Store with a tailored list of apps that work very, very well with the Rocket Spatial System. And one of my favorites that they've included is the Xbox Game Pass. This means that you can pair up a controller and use Game Pass directly through the Station 2, making it a very powerful device indeed. Interestingly, there's also a screen casting app which lets you cast your phone screen to the glasses via the Station 2 remotely and then you can open up perhaps the native app browser or native web browser. And you can see that now you've got multiple windows open with different apps. You've got your phone up and you've got the web browser. And this is a great function for those that want to use this for serious multitasking. You've basically got your own augmented reality computer in a tiny package. Sure, you've got products like the Quest 3 or Apple Vision that perform similar function, but those are absolutely massive in comparison. This is a relatively small package, and in a way, it makes it more likely that you'll use this for longer periods of time because it's smaller and objectively more comfortable. And in fact, the Max 2 glasses even have some improvements in comfort over the original glasses. The nose pads, for one, are slightly bigger and much softer as they're filled with cushioned air rather than just solid rubber. And the arms are also made of 100% magic. The original ones had this solid plastic build, which while after wearing them for a little while, you do begin to sort of notice the rigidity crushing the sides of your head. But the new ones, despite looking almost identical, can actually flex. And that's not kind of like the, the plastic sort of bending. That is rubberized, but it looks like plastic. It's uh, kind of a bit surprising, and I was genuinely surprised the first time I realized it did this, 
but let me tell you that these two things alone, the pads and the bend, have made the Comfort of the Max 2s much better and far more usable for extended periods of midsummer murders marathons. But moving back to the software experience, I think that the multiple window workflow is incredibly useful. And if you're comfortable with mobile computing, then this is one of the easiest, smallest, the most efficient ways to bring a three monitor setup with you everywhere you go. And going back to what I said earlier, it's completely private. No one can actually see what you're looking at. So if you are someone who works with something like sensitive information, this will also be a massive selling point. Now, in terms of price, they've seen a bit of an increase compared to the previous version. As a whole, the spatial package, which is the Rocket Max 2 glasses and the Station 2, comes to a current price of $698, which although I think is a little more than the previous version, I don't think it's an unreasonable price increase for the sheer amount of functionality provided with you in these. One moment, you could have them connected to your phone watching Netflix. The next moment, you could have them plugged into its own custom computer device working on three screens and watching Netflix natively. All in a device which fits in a case not too much bigger than a regular glasses case. And in my eyes, that's pretty impressive. Thing is though, if perhaps you just wanted the glasses on their own or were looking at exclusively using them, on your phone, you can get the glasses for just $429, which again, I think is reasonable. It's not overpriced, it's not underpriced. It's pretty right for the tech, I think. Interestingly, there is a cheaper version, sort of. There are actually two versions of the Spatial Pack. There's one with GMS certification, which means that you can use Google services and have streaming apps like Netflix and Amazon Prime directly on the Rocket Station, which is important if you don't intend to use your phone with this device. But if you only intend on using it with your phone, then you can buy the non-GMS certified version, which means it will have limited to no native support for Google services or streaming platforms. I'll be honest here though, in my opinion, the non-GMS version isn't cheap enough to warrant the loss of Google services or streaming apps like Netflix, which are for me the primary functions that I love about the spatial system. In my eyes, it's better spending a little bit extra to get a GMS certified piece of kit because it's more universal and usable. But overall, this new Rocket AR Spatial Pack is a welcome upgrade from the Rocket Joy Pack. I wouldn't say that it's a revolutionary change that redefines augmented reality, but I would say that all of the little changes and refinements, both to the glasses and to the station and software have gone a long way in solidifying Rocket as a great option in the media-focused AR glasses market. But what do you guys think about the Rocket AR Spatial Upgrade? Have all the changes been for the better or did you have a few other features on your wish list that Rocket have yet to implement? Let us know in the comments below. And if you do want to take a look at this new release from Rocket, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can take a look for yourselves. I believe, if I'm right in saying, that they're offering an early bird discount for pre-ordering these because I've managed to have to get hold of these pre-release. So make sure you check out the current price at the link below to see what discount they're offering. But other than that, make sure you hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys back for another episode of Steve's Reviews soon.